and the video has started. Okay, good afternoon, guys. This is Let's Just Ban Government doing my fifth, fourth, fifth, not third. I've done more than three, probably fifth questionnaire. Uh, finally, actually getting around to doing this. So I know I said like two weeks ago I had actually put time aside to actually do this and make the video and record and everything, but what happened and I was like trying to be smart and I was like, hey, I have a $800 camera that I spent money on and have put lenses for it and used that in my photography skills. Why the hell do I not use that towards my videos I do? So I did and I tried it. But unfortunately, the Sony camera that I have does not have a rotating camera, so I was not able to actually watch myself be recorded. And with that, the video cut out halfway through. I was done with it, and it was like 2 in the morning when I had finished. So I was like, no, I am not restarting this. I'll just do it later, and I went to bed. So I did do this back when I said I was going to do it. But no one was recording me doing it. So yeah, here it goes again. Starting off within the minute here, I would like to thank you guys actually for the questionnaire. I mean... Every time I do this, I don't know what the hell happens. I mean, when I post stuff on iFunny, no one likes it. Like, I don't get shit when it comes to likes and everything. Maybe like 30 max in some of my posts. But yeah, when I do questionnaires, I get like 62 comments that are actually like in-depth questions that are going to take me a while to cover. Like, the post itself got like two top comments, and it was just questions for this video. Which is ridiculous. But thank you. I mean, whatever, guys. appreciate how you... I don't even know what to say. But hey... Thank you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start all the way at the bottom and go all the way up to the top because that's where the questions were first asked and then I will let you know what questions were deemed the top questions here and I don't know if they were like anything significant. People just liked it the most, I guess. But um, let's get started. So the first question was, who is the one person who ignited your interest in politics? So that can be traced back to about my junior year in high school. Um, and that was when I started doing some stuff after school with regards to band, choir, and getting really in-depth of it, and I had to stay over for extra hours and was unable to go home, um, because of lack of car and that kind of stuff, so I had to stay at a friend's house inside town. And his parents were, as what I would call them nowadays, neocons, but as we kind of generally, over no, generally know overall, neocons are not exactly inaccurate with history to an extent. I mean, they have the general history when it comes to free markets and that kind of stuff. It's their military invention. It's sucky. Um, so, anyways, I would be going to her house and doing some stuff for school and everything, and there'd be, like, miscellaneous little tiny bits and nits that would come into play, and it'd be like, oh, that's not true, we did this, this, and this, and she would support the stuff with, like, actual, like, articles I could read online, and it's like, what? I'm like, hold on a second here, what? And I started actually getting into the point where I realized that public school doesn't teach you shit about anything that actually happens in history. Um, and then I dove into that, I found a hold of Glenn Beck, I did a little bit of stuff with, um... Crap, who's the other talk show host? The other one, I can't think of his name. Um, and I actually, that was when I discovered Rand Paul for the first time and was actually watching a lot of his speeches and kind of, that's kind of what took me away from the my position on the war on drugs and that kind of stuff, was watching a couple of videos of his. So, um, probably starting on my friend's mother, got me kicked into that, and then watching Glenn Beck and Rand Paul for quite a time got me really, really into politics, and that's kind of what started, kicked it off. Uh, 1035 asked me, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I see myself in the year 2026, um, hopefully figuring out whatever job I want and actually having a better setup to do these YouTube, YouTube videos because this is kind of crappy. I apologize, but hey, it's what I have. Um, I, I really don't have an idea. I barely have tomorrow's planned out. I have to go to work at two, which sucks, but hey, um, I don't know. Hopefully something techy. I've contemplated maybe doing something with teaching because I have a really great patience for people who are younger and... Um, you know, that kind of stuff. And I love being able to teach concepts to people and ideas. I like big ideas, that kind of stuff. But I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. Um, Libertarian United V2 asked, how should we defeat the New World Order? Um, I don't know. I have not really thought about that. I would say there really isn't no great way to defeat the New World Order, considering how everything's going. I mean, when I first did this video, I probably had a long, lengthier answer, but with Rand dropping out of the race recently, I just looked at the entire universe and I'm like, we're fucked. <laughs> we're screwed. Um, talk, as I've, I said before, use your speech, try to convince people to do stuff, but no one cares. I mean, we're not, as a culture, we are consistently discontinued from everything. So, I mean, it's just, I don't think there's hope. I have no hope at the moment. There's your answer. So no way to do it. Um, Provincius, I think, asked, how many Bitcoins would I have to voluntarily give you so that you would voluntarily give me a blowjob? All of them that you have. And that's points up to that question. <laughs> um, Logical Fallacies asked me, it's a little bit older question, but I'll still answer it. Why are we supporting Rand and not an actual libertarian? Um, well, for me, the question 
going in that regard. So it's like I said, I started off watching a lot of Rand's videos. And so back in my junior high school, 2012, when I started watching him, I told my friends and at the time, like, when 2016 hits, I'm voting a Rand Paul, hopefully Ted Cruz ticket. That's who I want in office. Um, obviously, this was back when I was leaning more towards Neocon. But, I mean, Rand has consistently, over the course of the years, been evolving with my political beliefs. And I really align really well with him. Um... Now that he's dropped out and I've had to find and try to find a new candidate, I kind of like some of the other guys. Austin Peterson is one I'm following recently, and he had a comment on there about he tries to line up with the third president of the United States. I was like, yeah, going for him. So, I mean, that's kind of why. Past history with that man. I like him. Um, 1035 asked, would you kill one random person to save the five, or save five other random people? Depends. I mean, that completely depends on the situation. Is it just five other random people that completely random like i mean just i mean is it I, i'm assuming by the context you're putting your your situation in, and it's one random person that has no idea hasn't done anything wrong versus five other people who have done nothing wrong um in that concept i might kill five the one person just because of it um but i mean other concepts too you have to go into plaque if it was like five people who were dying instantly i mean i don't know I never be put in that situation, so I don't know what I would do. But if I knew it was five random people who hadn't done anything, and then one other person that wouldn't do anything, I might sacrifice him. But then again, too, I wouldn't actually be the one killing the other five people. I would think that somebody else would be killing it. So for the fact that I have to kill this one person, I may actually let them do that because I don't want to be seeing that there in front of me, realizing, hey, I am the one that actually did that. So I probably would not. I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. There you go. There's a question. Um, Pennsylvania Libertarian asked me, do you plan on actually going into politics? I did, and then I don't, because politics after a while really gets on my nerves, and there's times where I just shut out the media, and for like months on end, I will become as ignorant on the politics as any other guy on the web, and so, because I just get frustrated and upsets me after a while, so I stop. Um, maybe, maybe not, I'm obviously, I'm going to full-fledged get into something in the private market first before I actually do that, so I can have something to default on, because I don't want to make politics a career, so... Um, he also asked me, views on refugee crisis. <laughs> okay, so I understand, like, asking a few questions over and over again. I get that quite a bit, actually. The questions, people ask me the same questions repeatedly in these videos. But you need to go check out my other three videos I've done. They're linked to the YouTube description. If you take your little pointer thing or your fingers and click up there or up there or wherever it is down here where it says YouTube, it will direct you to my page. And on my page, there is four or five videos where I have answered questions and then later in the video actually gone back and answered or argued with Life According to Econ, or my Negatarian, and all these other guys on the issue of the refugee crisis. So do that because that'll get you a lot more in depth. But real quick here, uh, refugee crisis, they should be allowed in the country. They shouldn't be given welfare dependent or anything on Medicare or welfare dependency, that kind of stuff. But the current situation, how much they're getting in welfare, is not enough to say that, hey, we shouldn't allow them inside the country. I'd rather have that happen than, you know, not let them here. So there you are. But I argue that more intensively back there. So go do that. Watch those videos. And watch the other guys' videos, which you might have trouble finding because it's been a while. But I'm sure if you ask them, they will gladly link the videos to you. So do that. Um, Pennsylvania Libertarian says Rand Paul 2016. No, not anymore. <laughs> nope. That's that face from need Snapchat to bring me the tears, but well. Uh, the Libertarian Capitalist asked, if you could elect one person to have absolute power over the United States, can be someone from the past or present, George Washington, Alexander the Great, or Ron Paul, for example, who would it be and why? Jesus. I would elect Jesus. For obvious reasons. First one being he's the son of God, so yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Better get your holy ass saved, that's what I'm saying. Next question. Um, are you well-versed in competing currencies? If so, you should discuss it. I'm not extremely well-versed in it, but a lot of things with regards to um, competing currencies, I often hold the view that a lot, of stuff can, a lot of stuff can be transferred back and forth between like other products and stuff. So laws, supplies, and demands with regards of a certain item or good can be transferred over to, like for instance, a currencies. Um, to give you an example, if I have certain types of cookies I'm trying to sell in a bake sale and those don't sell very well and there's ones that are doing better than others, currencies will work the exact same way with businesses 
and people having different forms of it and businesses wanting to abide to all those different forms of currencies. Um, you can see that, for instance, in Overstock.com and Rand Paul's campaign before he quit were both taking forms of United States currency and also Bitcoin because they want to open that market up. So if you were doing that, um, the real quick, I guess, kind of analyst of that was be if you had competing currencies, there would be a very, very strong incentive for people not to overprint their currencies to make it completely devalued and people not have their currency anymore and then go to the other ones because that would lead, in, lead to hyperinflation of that currency, which is good. We're going to see with the United States dollar. Um, so that kind of stuff. I don't know if that really answers your question. I mean, if you have specific questions on currencies, I'm always willing to take that kind of stuff and do videos because I've been saying I want to do that for a while. When I get better equipment and actually, like, you know, an actual camera and some speaker systems, I might do that. So, um, yeah, ask. I might answer it. I hope that kind of clears up a little bit. But anyways, the libertarian capitalist ass says, now let's say you had control over re reconstructing the United States governmental system. How would you rebuild it and why? Examples, anarcho-capitalism, country, or an anarcho-capitalist country, anarcho-communism, constitutional republic, state communism, etc. Well, I mean, I've told you guys before, I'm not completely an ANCAP. I'm more of a Lib cap that's like gray area and cap and that's why my profile says I'm a confused and cap because I really do lean that way But this would be if I had the opportunity to do that It'd be like kind of ironic, but this would actually be the time where I would implement anarcho-capitalism and see what happens Because <laughs> I mean I like I want to see what happens I want to see the puppets go and see what works and what doesn't work. I mean hey um, because if it works, leave it there and don't mess with it anymore. Just let it go. Um, if it doesn't work, it's obviously when you switch to going to more of a government situation. But, um, if I had to do a government situation, it would be a wholeheartedly constitutional republic and a whole lot more on the guards of the Bill of Rights. For instance, I would put term limits in for every single person inside the government. I don't care who it is. I mean, I'd put term limits in. You can only serve in office for this many years and that's it. Because um, that instantly, by having to force people to go back to the public sector, would you know create an incentive for them not to screw things up. Second thing, I would remove all retirement funds for anyone running in Senate. Like just instantly discontinue that. If you're in the Senate, if you're in the House of Representatives, no retirement, no benefits after you're in office. So that instantly provides more incentive for them not to screw things up and have the park, private market going well. Um, those kind of incentives and stuff. And then there's a lot more other things that would go into place with regards to setting income tax. We're going to have it or not have it. You know, strictly say, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. Um, those kind of things. But, I mean, we obviously know how well the government does that nowadays. But I think if you actually implemented the um, regards to the Senate limits and that kind of stuff, and then you went about making it so it was really, really difficult to change on a congressional level, but made it easier for the states to actually change stuff like that, um, that would actually implement and improve the constitutional system. I think if you implement, if they did that back when they wrote the constitution, I don't think we'd have problems like we do today. Oh, and I'd also make it so that you cannot take the ability for the Senate to be voted or be appointed by the states. I give the states their right to pick their senators instead of making it a public election. Do that too. Um, next thing is presidential election, Donald Trump versus Vladimir Putin. Who do you vote for? Um... <sighs> Do I want to pick the turd that has bad hair? Or do I want to pick the turd that has no hair and is like a giant... I don't know. Um, Putin, I guess. I guess. I don't know. Because I really dislike Donald Trump on a, like a... Not even like a political level. Just like on a personal level. I hate that man. And I don't really care for Putin that much because he's never ruled over me. Um, I, I guess. I don't really have a good answer to that one. Uh, Putin. We'll go with that one. Um, the libertarian capitalist. What is one scientific fact or theory that absolutely blows your mind? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I really don't have like a strict scientific fact or theory that blows my mind. Because I mean, when it did blow my mind, it's probably become used to now. But I mean, anything like of technology nowadays, I mean, this is kind of going away from the question a little bit. Hopefully it answers it though. But I mean, like stuff with technology, now it's coming the other week when I made this video. I was like the night before on Google Earth and just like going around the entire world and like, seeing this and like, pictures and everything and I was just randomly exploring Hawaii and Australia and all these other places and I had found this random guy's ladder sitting in his driveway in Australia in the year 2015. Me and a little Ohio here doing that. So I thought that was pretty cool, you know, like to have that kind of technology to do that nowadays. But I mean, it's not really a scientific factor theory, but that kind of stuff blows my mind. It's like we're able to do that. Like I can have video chats of people from Washington all the way to Ohio and it'd be real time like that. It just makes me happy inside. Technology makes me happy. So there, I'll kind of answer your question, but kind of not. Um, 
Libertarian approved to ask, since we are on this earth for such a short amount of time, what is your opinion on the meaning of life? I don't really have much of an opinion on the meaning of life. I mean, from my Christian worldview and coming from an atheist pr pr perspective, i very anti anything that says you have this predetermined notion that you have to do this and this kind of stuff and I hate this whole entire thing and the argument with Catholics and everything about that is stupid and I don't like it. Um, I think it's completely bullshit. So, and I think it defeats the purpose of having, like, things in life. I mean, for instance, if you take that into, like, relationships, like, I'm predetermined to find somebody who's going to be my soulmate. Like, I think that's completely stupid, because then it's like, yeah, I was picked by heaven, you were picked by me, I haven't picked. And the other side of that is, instead, if you're not predetermined for stuff, it's like, yeah, I picked out you out of the million people on this earth because I thought you were the most impressive. That's my personal choice. I think that seems more meaningful to me. So... There is no meaning in life. You just take it with you will. I mean, you have the whole entire Christian perspective of being saved and following in Jesus Christ's foot, foot, footprints, but after that, it's all yours. Go for it. Do whatever you want to do. That serves God. So, there. That's your answer. Um, next question is, how would World War III start in your opinion? I imagine it's going to be something through the United States um, doing something with regards of being military involved. I picture it being... A, either Donald Trump election win or like a Marco Rubio win or even Hillary Clinton win and then them pushing the Senate to put war upon the Middle East and start going in with boots on the ground. That's where I kind of see it going because right now I feel like of the entire country of the attacks on Paris is the only reason why Rand Paul lost because the entire oxygen of the debate <laughs> sucked up by Donald Trump and all these really warmongering people. It's one reason why Ted Cruz is really high because um, people just want to blow them up. They don't have any perspective on that. They just want to kill which is stupid, but it is. Um, so I honestly don't see it through something like that. Now, it very well could do is a couple things. That's my prediction, as long as ISIS doesn't do anything to us. I mean, if they do something like that, it could happen faster, but that's where I see it going, if that answers your question. Um, who is your next choice for pres president on the Republican side, assuming Rand is number one? I love the fact these are old questions on what's happened since then. It's just kind of funny to laugh at them. Uh, who is your pick for the Democratic nom nomination? Um... On the Republican side, I have made memes upon memes about it being the difference between a shit and a shit. So, but, I mean, it's basically what it is. I mean, you guys saw what I posted the other day. I think Ted Cruz lines up me the most out of anybody who's running right now on the Republican side, if you're limiting it to just Republicans. Um, so, I mean, honestly, it'd probably be who I had to go with. That, and I know it's same stupid and kind of selfish. I'd rather be carpet bombing the Middle East rather than destroying my economy here at home. So, I mean, that's my opinion on that but i mean that's kind of going with uh patrick's whole opinion of i'd rather have the my my rights of my welfare being protected than the people allowed to come here so i mean i kind of being hypocritical in that sense but that's where i stand <laughs> um on the democratic side don't have many options as of now it's kind of like just two and i don't really like either one of them i didn't really mind martin o'malley to an extent actually i kind of thought he was more down to earth and more reasonable um and part of the reason I liked him the most is that because, you know, he was the less leaning to the left out of all of them. So, I mean, the most right person out of them I liked. Unfortunately, he's not doing anything, and my family liked him a lot, too. So, um, that'd be who I picked out of those guys. So, there you are. Next question is, if you would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? <laughs> um, one horse-sized duck, because it'd be same rather interesting. I feel like the numbers of those many attacking me would become overwhelming at a while, and I could... Dodge off a horse duck, a size duck, easier. I mean, that's what I would do. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, would you touch poop for twenty dollars? I mean, twenty bucks, twenty bucks, and I can wash my hands. So yes, we'll go yes on that question. Rosenstein asked, "Would you be ready and willing to take up arms against the government?" I have answered this question before in other videos. I thought you would watch my videos, man. You even repubbed this one, I think. Jerk. Um, but anyways. Um, yes, and as I said before, it would be something that we'd have to fall on lines of being peaceful revolutionaries, if you can believe that, since only having issues with the government, not getting in and destroying public or private property and that kind of stuff. You know, you gotta be good about what you do. Um, First World War asked me, get me sucky? No. Uh, First World War asked, would you marry me? Depends, do you have money? And will you give me Bitcoin? Um, life according to Anne, oh, nope, sorry, you didn't ask a question, you just made a statement. Uh, it was goddamn, you got a lot of questions. Yeah, I already know this. Uh, Capri Libertarian, or Libertatum, asks, would you rather ingest 100 duck-sized cucumbers or one cucumber-sized duck? Um, or cucumber-sized dick, sorry. 
I would go with the 100 dick sized cucumbers because I'm not comfortable with that at all. And I like cucumbers, so I'll do that. It's fine to me. Uh, how long have you been into politics? Did you have any cringeworthy political views when you were younger? About eh, two years, kind of ish, going forward with that. That's what I've been doing. Um, and yes, I was a neocon that was anti uh, 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 gay marriage and pro drug war, and um, unfortunately, very pro death penalty. So, yeah, there's some very cringy opinions over time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still do on some stuff. But hey, whatever. Um, I was asked, what are your opinions on world policy and what can we do to improve our relationship with Russia? Also, favorite, favorite firearm. I mean, I don't... My opinions on world policy is that they're all fucked up. What can we do to improve our relationship with Russia? Not bother them and leave them alone. Um, open the borders, or open our borders up to so allow Russian immigrants to come into the country. Haha, -ha, there you go. Being so we're less corrupt, free training of them. That's stuff we can do to improve Russia. Also, favorite firearm? I've been looking at a couple. Um, one was the, um, shoot, what's it called? The, um, I can't remember what it's called at the moment. It's a one gun. I'm not really a gun guy. I've been looking at a concealed carry weapon for myself, and it was like the full-sized something. I've talked about it before, but that one's what I'm leaning towards. So go look for it, and you can find it somewhere in my post. I posted about it. Um, next question was, in an anarchist society, what would happen if I decided to become a serial killer like Jeffrey Daham Daham Dahammer, whatever his last name is? What would happen in any society if you became a serial killer, be it a statist one or be it anything else? I mean, you're going to have people come after you. I mean, anarchist society isn't saying that you have no laws and nothing like that. It's just saying the laws and stuff are privatized rather than being on a public format where it's being forced. You, everything's in private enterprises and trade and stuff like that. So you would be put in jail. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. Your society promotes the death penalty. Can you have death penalty in a free trade? Here, I'll give you, take your, I don't know how that would work. So probably there wouldn't be a death penalty in the anarchist society. I'm going to be gone. But I mean, if it, whatever. I don't, you would be put in jail, that kind of stuff. Prosecuted for that. Anyways, um, and then the last two questions are the top two questions that were asked. Because they were given the star by iFunny. So, hey, whatever. Um, the first one is from Ward Squid asking the wonderful question of, have you ever had to deal with a liberally based teacher or biased teacher giving you bad grades, harming your educational experience in any way? Hell yeah. <laughs> um, I had a professor in my high school right when I started getting involved into politics and everything and realizing that history was screwed. So um, as you can imagine, when I found out that history was very, very skewed from what we learned in high school, guess who was I went after in my uh, history knowledge? And that would be uh, Woodrow Wilson and FDR. Went after those two guys and found a lot about them. Um, so we had to do a presidential report on a couple guys and do a presentation on that. And I chose FDR to do that on. And the professor was not very happy when I finished it because I made really good stances and argued about how he was one of the worst presidents in the world, um, <laughs> in our history, like of all time. And so, yeah, I didn't get a very good grade on that. He still gave me a grade. It wasn't awful, but it was not a good grade. And I argued with him several times throughout the entire semester. So, yeah, that was always fun. Um, the very top, top question was from Fish Cheer, my old buddy Fish Cheer. Missy man. Uh, do you think any significant change can be made in our government through democratic means, voting, petition, etc.? I mean, yes, it can be made. If I did this video originally, I had a much, much more optimistic approach to things. Um, honestly, nowadays, I don't think it is. I don't think it possibly can. I think we're going to see the collapse of America and then violent stuff happen and then come back to hopefully our origins origins that's why i said i'm moving to switzerland eventually that's what i'm going to do because <laughs> there's no hope we're lost with the debt we have now and then the fact that we're having bernie sanders run who wants to add to that debt and we're having donald trump run who won't do anything to decrease the debt deficit yeah we're screwed that's where pretty much where we are so no no he could i mean we had the chance it could have happened ron paul maybe it could have happened but it didn't happen it was gone so no, nothing at all. I don't think there's anything we can do. I'm sorry. I'm being very pessimistic tonight, but hey. Um, that's it. So that was all the questions, guys. So hopefully this video will be up tomorrow. It's like 1 in the morning. Damn, I gotta go to sleep. One twelve actually. But anyways, yeah, hopefully this video will be up tomorrow. I have been talking with my life a little, according to Econ, a little bit. Not a whole lot. My schedule is just awful when I can do these videos, so I don't know if that podcast will ever get up just between the two of us because, I mean, it's literally awful to do these videos. So, um, 
Thank you guys for sitting here and watching through. I won't keep you on too long because I am going and pushing 25 minutes here. Have a good night, guys. Sleep tight. Take care. Whatever. I don't care. Life or ban, ban Gov signing off.